Trolloid Games. Join the fray! One moment. You got it? All right, there we go. I think it was the speaker. I still don't really know how that thing works. All right. So all that jibber-jabbering I did was for naught. And I'll never remember what I said. There you go. A little quiet, he says. Hmm, I haven't changed anything. Turn that speaker thing up. All right, can you hear me? I don't know. No grape is death. <laughs> there you go. It's always something. Always something. But I can, I can make it so many requests. Yeah, there you go. That's what I need. <laughs> what I really need is a donut. I want a donut for a while. I don't eat donuts very often. How's it going, on, Happy? What is wrong with my damn camera? All right, there we go. All right. Yeah, Chuck, hey, Chuck, change the title, whatever whatever we're doing today. I think we're just doing a random GM's Tricks of the Trade. Um, what did I talk about yesterday? I did a TikTok on one of my uh, one of my little things that I do when I'm running big, huge tables. Um, it was probably the best advice. Yeah, <laughs> it's the most important thing I've ever said. <laughs> I'm sure that, I'm sure. And it's possible. I don't say very much that's important. So, <laughs> got gotcha. you yeah, advice. There you go. Oh, Gary. I never did get to play with Gary. I always, I always uh, made sure everybody else got to play. I, I played a few board, board games with him, but I never actually sat down and rolled dice with him. One of my great regrets, but there you go. Uh, there's no talent, Chuck. Everything's been going wrong around here. I think we finally, you know, Todd's been binding like crazy for the Starship Warden. We've bound just shy of 3,000 books um, in the print shop. And after about a thousand or so, the binder kept gumming up. Every 300 to 400 books, probably not even that, probably two to 300 books, it, it would bind up and the carriage would not really jump, jump the rail, it's not really a rail, it's a chain back there. It's a chain that, so you have a carriage and then a chain moves the carriage back and forth across the grinding wheel and to the clamp and all of that craziness. But um, the, no, he's talking about the thing underneath it. But the um, the carriage kept jumping off, and it would gum up on one of the flywheels, and it's just a big ass mess. And we couldn't figure out what was going on. So, what we, in typical uh, 
because we're in a hurry in typical troll fashion we cut chunks of cardboard out put it on a part of the framework so the carriage couldn't go all the way to the right and it couldn't jump ship and that worked pretty well until the cardboard got pounded into flat and we had to replace that and then apparently the machine figured out how to bypass that uh, and it, it, that stopped working but um, after that we, we had to take it apart and figure out what was wrong with it. There's one little bitty screw loose. I think we've got a little nut loose on the chain link assembly and, it, and we finally fixed it. But um, uh, it has been a non-stop comedy of errors. So whatever you're doing Chuck uh, is right par and parcel with everything else. Uh, is it supposed to be troll talk? I thought we were doing GMTT today. We're doing James Tricks of the Trade or something. Uh, <laughs> Crate got thrown out. Uh, yeah, we're just doing an open GMTT. I don't, it doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't matter. People can see GM's Tricks of the Trade. It's all good. You're fine, Steve. It's just not sticking. Oh, okay. Who knows? It is what it is. There you go. <laughs> So I did not get a new gym Tricks of the Trade up and out, um, and Tim's on vacation anyway, so I would have had to do the newsletter and that never would have happened. But, um, and so we're just, we're going to ramble this time, we're going to do what we did last week and just kind of throw it open to questions, commentary, and, uh, and whatnots, and, and, and we'll just go from there. <laughs> we'll see what lands. If nothing lands, we'll call it a day, and uh, I'll go walk two miles before dinner, which I really don't want to do, but I'm going to do. Uh, and it's blazing 7 million degree heat outside. But that's a good thing. Uh, but anyway, we'll wait for a couple more minutes before we open it up uh, to questions, discussions, and all that kind of stuff. And if no one has anything, I'll dive in. GM Tricks of the Trade with Steven Schnault. Special Q&A Part 2. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Now all is right with the world. I'm even going to refresh that. Uh, okay, there you go. Alright, see what we got cooking. No worries, Chuck. We're up and running. We're up and running and we got the proper title, so we're good to go. So I gave a, I, I posted, I do short GMTTs on TikTok, and yesterday's was one of the things I do when I'm running really large tables and you start to lose a player. You know, you're, you've got 10 or 15 or more people at the play, at the table. And you see one getting a little distracted or starting to look at their phone or what have you. How's it going, Eat to Surf? Uh, one of the things that I do, and this is what I posted over there, uh, I'll, I try to always kind of keep an eye on the table. So if I'm, say I'm role playing heavy with some folks over here on the right, um, and but I'm always looking, I always just kind of look to make sure, you know, someone's not getting bored or what have you. And if I see someone kind of checking out, I'll get their attention and hold up a finger, I'll just say, hey, hey, one minute. Uh, so that now they're brought back to the table and now they're kind of engaged. Now they don't know what's going on. So they're focusing on you and they're curious what's going to happen next. Uh, and it stops them from looking at their phone or whatever it is they're doing. Back in my day, it was comic books, but, uh, and then you capture them now. And then I'll go back and finish what I'm doing, but you can't leave them hanging more than two or three minutes or you'll lose them again. So I always go back, but, um, one of the one of the comments, the only comment, TikTok still isn't growing much for us. The only comment we saw, I saw, was uh, someone said twenty four players in question mark. Because I that's I made that comment in TikTok that I've run up to tables up to twenty four players. So somewhere we've got a video of me running one of these games at GaryCon where I routinely have about twenty twenty one players. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put that up on TikTok because uh, it's it's delightful chaos is what it is, absolutely delightful chaos. How much time do you want to spend on shop prices, price lists, fleshing out every merchant NPC? Almost none. <laughs> Absolutely none. <laughs> uh, you know, I would love to do a huge giant book of equipment um, and and everything so that everything, like take the world builder and price everything out so the CK can go in, GM can go there and look at whatever, you know, they need to do. But, because um, players will buy everything. And now always, someone's always got some kind of thought that they want to do. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of giant price lists. We got a lot of stuff in the players' ammo bill. Looking at the new PHP, i got to say the art for the, the lock-picking rogue is one of the best pieces I've ever seen. Isn't that a crazy good picture? When I first saw it, um, I'll see if I can't get it up here on the, on the feed. When I first saw it, I was a little taken aback. I was like, well, I don't know if I want to do this. This is, this is pretty wildly different than anything we've done before, but... 
that's part of what I, working with Peter and Zoe, I kind of unleashed them and said, listen, just, I need this, give me what you got, and what you're thinking, and that one, I'm trying to look it up now, uh, man was that one, it's just really cool, there's the player's handbook, good God, ah, God bless my soul, bless my soul, you know what, that's on Dropbox, that's where that guy is, I'm an idiot. Getting there, getting there, there, there. What is it? the rogue female, right? Yeah, there it is. And while I'm getting that load, man, is it just a great picture? I'll have to save that as a JPEG. Can I just do the Beverly Hills building? What was that? What was that companion show to Green Acres? It was um had like a train station, a water tower, man, I can't remember. All right, while I'm getting this, loading this up, uh, let's see, Omen, how do you deal with a player, with, this is from Omen, how do you deal with a players that come across a single magic item, but everybody in the party and at the table wants a set magic item? How do you manage players that may be disenchanted about not getting a neato magic item in the campaign? That's actually, I run into that a lot, because I'm running these young guys. Um, and it's tough, because as a CK, you know, Player B should really get that thing, and that's generally what I try to do when they when that when that item goes to whomsoever it goes to, and if it should go to someone else, I try to just gently say, you know, that's a chime of opening, and that chime of opening for the rogue or the magic user, the magic user wouldn't have to get a, a knock spell, or the rogue then would have a better chance of, of picking locks. You know, that's kind of what the magic got. So I kind of meta game a little bit. I know meta gaming gets a lot of bad a bad rep. Uh, a lot of time, but I think it's sometimes very important. <laughs> He's got a huge part of the table uh, because otherwise you do end up with people a little bit sour at one another, um, and it's it's really hard. So I try to I, what I try to do is convince them to give it to the player who can use it the best. Because then that that way, even if it's a really cool item that everyone kind of wants, everyone can at least benefit from it because the person who can use it the best is actually. Is actually using it, you know, it, it frees them up to do whatever or, or however, so that, you know, they say they can use other abilities or spells or what have you. Yeah, but that's a tough one because uh, people do get kind of, especially if you don't, like me, I don't give out a lot of magic items, so the magic items are few and far between. And it's one of the things that I think is definitely wrong with AD&D, and I think C&C has this problem a little bit too. Most of the magic items are really constructed for fighters, clerics, um, Fighters and clerics, really, in magic, users, you know, wizards get a lot of a lot of the wands and the stands and all of that stuff. But a lot of the odd classes, the odd end classes, like the rogue and thief and whatever else, they don't get many magic items. So it's kind of tough, actually. It's kind of tough to distribute that stuff kind of equally. But that's one of the things I do. I try to I try to kind of push the item to the player uh, whose whose class would be, or race would benefit from it the most. I'm not sure if that answered your question, Omut, but uh, yeah, it's one of the things. And I'll tell you, to be honest with you, when I when I have when I'm when I'm doling out magic like that, it's very specific. Um, before, if it's a very very specific item, before it even hits the table, before they find it, uh, I try to soften the ground a little bit. You know, this item constructed for a rogue, whoever I want the item to go to, or whatever class I had it kind of built for, assuming that it's class based, uh, I try to gear it in one direction and usually uh, I've got a couple of players it's very easy to do this with I gear it to the player who's going to distribute it who I know doesn't want magic generally or doesn't care or is in the game for the different reasons so that they will give it to someone and then you at least have a player distributing the magic item to another player and that takes you out of the crosshairs and makes the party kind of kind of hash it out but even then you can get people on the side that you know those two were working out between themselves and someone didn't get it. it. It can be a tough issue. And you don't want to just give everybody a magic item. That's just, that's just crazy. School marm waving finger. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. I like it. I know everyone has a different preference, but what is a good average to spend on a fluff? Uh, what do you mean? Just, uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Just items, just stuff. Probably 10 or 15 gold pieces, just odd and things. How's it going, Time Lord's wife? Not naked. Uh, like I know everyone, blah, blah, blah. I hope you're doing good today. Let's see. Oh, blah, blah, blah. 
uh, said, Great Big responds to Omu. I like how Lord Gazoom, but I guess you guys can actually read that, right? I don't need to read everything. I want to do the highest picks first. There you go. Uh, price, let the dice do it. Let's, let the dice do it. Uh, you know, as much as I'm a huge fan of dice, I think I'm kind of a control, a GM that controls a lot. I like to keep things away from the random as much as I can because it can get, it can get kind of dicey. Let me, let me get this picture uploaded. So this is going to be the female rogue in the player's handbook. Uh, I think I spelled it rose, but that's fine. No one cares uh, if I can find it. Uh, and this is what Vic Danger was talking about. Uh, boom, it is gigantic. You can only see her hair. So there she is. Like just a fantastic picture. Zoe just knocked it out of the park. Even the trunk has an eye on it. Just very, 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 very cool. Um, yeah, that goblin, uh, Bifford, is one of my favorite. That's uh, an Eldritch Goblin's there. The prices are very dependent on the campaign world. That's true. How much does it cost? How much do you, you got? Yeah. <laughs> right? But you're fronting a campaign and they're traveling down the road and run across a couple of merchant wagons. Do you make a price list for all the goods they're carrying? No, generally great. Now, if that's that's a, a little bit more pointed question. So, generally speaking, I use the player's handbook and orient everything to that. So, if say they want to buy some meal for the horse or something, I'll, and just a day or two, I'll go to the player's handbook and find the nearest item. I think actually horse meal is in the player's handbook. I go and find the nearest item to it and just go. And most items, like buttons and string and whatever, it's going to be a couple of copper, copper pieces, a couple of silver pieces. So that stuff, I just end up winging it. Uh, you know, depending on how you've structured, because he's right, depending on how you've structured your campaign world and how you're doing a monetary policy, and I don't do that very much. It's way too complicated. It's, there's too many variables, and it's i, I got to live that anyways when I'm balancing TLG's books. So I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to do it in my fantasy world. Uh, so I, I, everything's, everything's pretty cheap. A couple silver pieces that get you just about anything that's not made out of iron. Petticoat Junction, that was the one, yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that came into my head. I think I was, I don't know, that just rolled into my head and I suddenly remembered the opening sequence to that. <laughs> That's funny. That's yeah, a good show. You want me to want, uh, remind me to want to buy everything if I played you. <laughs> but you want to go to resell it at half value. Just buy water rings or swim fins. There you go. <laughs> Imagine I would give the merchant a percent chance to have a what you want. Yeah, now they may not have everything. That's a good point, Stanner. Hello, hello, real long shot. How's it going? I tend to omote, I tend to run more players at my table, 7 to 12, and it's not practical to do about 12 magic items for everybody. No, 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 you're 100% right. And even if you're running five or six players, man, it, you'll end up with so... And it's kind of one of the problems I've got at, in my Young Bloods game, because they've gone into Alstrad, and they're running through some high-level stuff, and I'm not prepping enough, so I'm just giving them the treasure that they find, and it's it's too much treasure for their... They're at sixth level. Only four of them, and it's just too much treasure. So they're getting kind of top-heavy on magic items, and there's fixed to be some Dispel Magics rolled across that party and clean that out a little bit. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit of house cleaning, because you're right, you'll end up with 12,000 magic items at the table, and it's going to make playing boring, is what it's really going to do. I have played in games where the DM grants the players the ability to choose two items at various levels, uncommon in levels 3 to 5, rare items in 5 to 10, uh, and so on, and the DM just picks one of those items they want. That's interesting. Kind of let them choose their own. I even quit. I've become such a <laughs> such a, a, a bastard with it. I've even quit letting them. I would let players roll. You know, when when they it's a random encounter, they kill the giants, and there's a treasure hoard. Now I got to roll this treasure hoard up. I'd let the players roll so that they are part of. They're doing something. You know, while I'm rolling these dice, I've even quit doing that because I ran a game and they rolled. It was double zero, whatever, whatever, whatever. Ended up fifty thousand gold piece death mask at second or third level, and I thought this is I'm not I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> I'm just not doing this anymore. Do you prefer randomly generated treasure or planned treasure placement or selection? So I'm horrible with magic items. I'm horrible with it. I prefer random. Uh, I will occasionally do specific place treasure, but every single time, and I don't know if this is because I played the game for so many years both CNC and ADNZ, um, but every single time I roll those dice, I don't like what I roll. Uh, and I roll it again, and then I roll it again, and then I'm just picking something. Because <laughs> because most of those magic items, you, you know, I've played through them enough to know what 
Havoc is going to be reached at the table by the Helm of Teleportation, or the Helm of Brilliance, or whatever it is, the Ring of Invisibility. So when I roll, like, probably there's two dozen of them, I just don't want to give them players. I still want them to have it, because I know <laughs> it's just going to irritate me down the line. So I, I prefer random, but I end up <laughs> actually picking them most of the time. What I really need, what C&C really needs, AD&D definitely needed it. It needs a better minor magic item list. So that, so like I did a lot of magic items for the Monsters and Treasures of Air, but they're all epic, right? Most of them are these huge, high-level things. We need just like a bedroll that you wrap up in and heals you one to two points of damage. Uh, you know, just little things like that, just small things, so that when you're giving the magic items out, um, it has no huge earth shattering impact. And another thing I've started doing, Amut, um, and this is this is this I discovered this late in the day. Uh, I'm putting charges on lots of things. You know, wands and staves and whatever the other rods have charges. Well, now I'm putting charges on random crap, short swords. You know, whatever, ring of climbing, ring of rope of climbing, whatever. Just I'm just throwing charges out uh, just to, to kill the magic item sooner rather than later. Uh, Stabber, magic mark games, I like to get away from the type of campaign. Yeah, I don't like to do a lot of magic in them. I, I really don't. I like the idea of special items having a price range that you can uh, let RP and dice play. The only thing I really let people buy are spells um, because I don't really like the having to be forced every time they kill something for the magic users to gain anything. I've got to create a treasure hoard. Um, that has a, a scroll case or a book in it. So I actually allow players that play wizards, magic users, whatever game you're playing, uh, sorcerers, whatever, what's the other one, illusionists, uh, I allow them to go buy spells. Now they have to go to a specific town or talk to a guild and work crap out. We usually role play through, but um, yeah, that, that I definitely do. Uh, how's it going, Jack? Thanks for joining us. My players are reasonable with Treasure Division, and so D30 works. There you go. Uh, that's the way to do it. I was, yeah, that, I, I'm just stunned. Zoe just did a great job. And Peter's put out, Peter just rolled out the, the female knight and the, the dwarf male fighter. And oh my lord, they're fantastic. I'm just absolutely blown away. I was actually tinkering with the player's handbook. I didn't get to it as much as I wanted to this week, but tomorrow it was all player's handbook all day. I was wondering why you choose a D30. Do you have a blah, blah, blah? Because D30, D30s are awesome. We had them and needed to use for them. Exactly. <laughs> Jay knows the story. You got this D30 dice, you gotta do something with it. It's like the it's like the poor beleaguered D12. Nothing needs a D12. It's just sad. Uh, how's it going, Green Luton? How's it going, Enoch? Uh, we're just doing a random uh, open mic night tonight on the on the <laughs> on the GM's tricks of the trade. Uh, banned items, yes. I like the Pathfinder 2. E1 rules basically one charge per day, no need to track charges. That's pretty cool. Omo, please refrain from posting the links without permission. Dang, Omo, did you get in trouble? What did you do, man? Uh, let's see. Good. <laughs> it's been a rough week. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, my my last week was a rough one, so I'm sorry to hear you. You've had a, a rough one, but hopefully you're hopefully the the rest of your week will pan out, and your weekend will allow you to recuperate and get a little rest uh, and dive back into it next Monday. I need a bedroll of healing. That's a good little match. Got Mark Sandy came up with a whole bunch of. Magic items. I don't even know where they are. I don't know what we did with them. They, I think they were supposed to go in the adventurer's backpack, but I honestly don't know. They may. I don't know what happened to them. I need to ask Mark about that. But he did. It was like a, this bedroll of healing. There was a cot. I remember to help you memorize spells. There's all kinds of just little bitty things that don't change the game, but give the players something extra. How's it going, tabletop? Sending you good vibes on my stuff soon. Very cool. That was from Time Lord's Wife to Lord Gazimba. Hey, Time Lord's Wife, I need to shout at you. Uh, is Discord the best place to do that? Uh, I know you're talking to Chuck, but I want to I give you a shout out. I see D100 is the challenging one, sort of tough to see <laughs> what the result is. Yeah. I need many more minor magic items in my game, so I created about 500 mostly minor stuff from all over the DD world for CNC. You want magic pants? You've got them. Dude, you need to send that to me. Let me publish it. I'll pay you. <laughs> that would be awesome. I love stuff like that. Absolutely love stuff like that. Small magic items. You know, a thousand and one years ago, I was playing, uh, so this is going to be the 80s, the mid-80s or something like that, and and, and, the, and I don't honestly know if I made this up or if I got this from the T-Series, I don't know where this came from, but in Verberbach, there was a city I, I, I was playing, again, this might have been someone else's idea that I got from a module, uh, it's been way too many years, but I had this guild of wizards, and one of the things that they did was made 
magical things like a magical stool that would walk to you if you needed to put your foot on it, you know, a magical decanter that would fill with water on a command word, stuff like that. Just very simple things. Um, and I like the idea of it because it made no, it made no sense really, and it still kind of makes no sense that if you're a wizard and you're able to manipulate magic like that, then why wouldn't you make things more comfortable? Isn't that what we do with technology all day, with from air conditioning to giant bright light bulbs? Um, don't we, don't we do that? So why wouldn't you do it with magic? But I eventually kind of jettisoned it because I didn't like the tone. It was. It was too cutesy, and it was it, the, the tone was just too different for the games that I was running, which were a little darker, heavier, combat-oriented, uh, not combat-oriented, but, you know, battle, say, whatever. Uh, and the, the stool walking, <laughs> walking across the stage kind of wrecked all that. So I, I kind of just phased it out of my game not long after I introduced it. But it's an interesting idea. Why wouldn't magic users, wizards, sorcerers, illusionists do use their magic to make lives a little better? And if they die, what happens to the walking stool? Does it just wander off into the sunset? Which is kind of a cool idea, to be honest with you. Uh, it was a bit longer shift today. I had to keep shaking my money maker on the pole stage at the tavern. It's some really good bird songs. Well, there you go. At least the music was good, man. That's all you can ask for. <laughs> you can ask for no more. And hey, thank you for the tip. I changed uh, the TikTok thing, and we. I seem to have gotten a few more followers. I don't know if that's specifically why, but I suspect that it is because I got five or six after I posted yesterday's videos and I had already changed from Troll Lords to Troll Lord Games. So hopefully that tip worked out. Thank you very much for that. And I still haven't read your piece, but it is, uh, it's there on my list. Oh, wait, the 80s was 1,000 and one years ago. It feels like it, man. <laughs> Time works a little differently here. Anywhere else I would be hundreds of thousands of years old, let me tell you. Uh, this last, shipping the warden on top of the Monsters and Treasures of Eric because there's so many parts with it. And I, I can't even, I, some of the stuff that we had to do to get these things out the door is absolutely nuts. And all of our equipment, other than the cutter, the cutter never failed once, but the binder, yeah, software problems, constant software problems with stamps, uh, computer in there. The scale, and I've had the scale forever and a day, the scale started messing up. So it's just that cursed radiation cloud. <laughs> it ate everything up. And there you go. What are you going to do? Until they become floating discs. So you know, I like the D8 plus D12 for a 2 to 20 shape table. Hmm, that's very good. That's very good. I would do amazing things with that decanter of endless water. Yeah, I gave one of those to my players. It was his favorite magic item. He lost everything other than that decanter. He would always, he would always do anything to keep that decanter going. <laughs> I didn't realize there was a free product like the Crusader's Companion until the latest podcast. I'm looking forward to reading through 300 plus pages of optional CNC rules. It's some great stuff in there. I haven't looked at it in a while, but it's some really, really cool stuff in there. Let's uh, see. La, 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 la. Okay, and there we go. All right. And that is an honest chest in the picture trying to be open. Yeah, <laughs> she's in for a shock when she gets that door open. She's going to wish she, <laughs> wish she had some chimes of opening. You notice the end times when scales begin messing up. Yeah, I mean, I've had this thing. I don't even know when we got it. I, it's, we started shipping in 2001. I know we didn't have it then. We probably got it in like 05 or 06 or something. And it just, it just works. It just works, but it was messing up, so I'm not sure what's going on. One of my favorite magic items is ring of create food and drink. Uh, man, Todd's got that. Todd's got a ring of sustenance that drives me crazy because I can't bring any, I can't bring any hunger into the table because he's always got a stupid ring. Uh, Frog Run Games Rapid Epic had a simple magical broom that swept up a small area on its own. The item turned out to be insanely valuable. <laughs> Put a blanket over the broom, trick out your enemies. <laughs> Leave it to some clever player to come in there and turn that to turn a magic broom into this monster distracting weapon. Uh, but you know, you gotta give them points for it, right? Yeah, Vic Danger, I love the scar on her left temple. Like she uh, tripped a trap somewhere. Yeah, and like the hair's burned off or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, she does, is always really, really good about that. She did, um, the character Ava, who is the female ranger from the, the fiction I'm writing. And she did this piece on it. She did this blue jay feather at the bottom of the bow that is so, I don't know, it suddenly personalized the whole thing. The, the, the picture is fantastic to begin with, but she, she personalized it with it. Suddenly this, you have a person who's, she's, she's done something so unique whatever personal she personalized her bow in a very unique way and it was it's very cool that type of I, I absolutely eat that stuff up absolutely eat that stuff up 
One thing you learn doing LARP, always open found boxes, chests from behind. <laughs> so it always opens in front of you. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Known for grape ape, known for weaponizing anything in a game. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, everyone, just blah, blah, blah. Uh, yes, all good. That's funnier than crap. Uh, at any rate, for those of you just joining us, uh, this is GM Tricks the Trait, and we're just doing a open Q&A. If you have any questions for me or for the group, or comments, commentary, throw them in the stream, and we'll do our best to address them. Uh, we normally have a, a more structured show, but things here at TLG have been uh, in, a, in a, a radiation cloud for about a month now, I think. And uh, I think we, I literally think this morning we just got through it, I think. I think we're through it, <laughs> so things should, they never ease up, but they, you know, things should ease up, they, they should ease up. At the very minimum, the two Kickstarters are closed and everybody's got their stuff or should have it soon as it lumbers its way across the, uh, the pond or what have you. So what's better, ring of protection plus one, five feet radius, or single ring of protection plus three? Yeah, I'd have to go with the plus three. I think I'd have to go with the plus three. That gives you that extra AC. Um, and you know how it is that it's funny because, like, I ran a game two days ago, and it was a, it was, they, they entered in an abstract. For those of you who, who are familiar with it, if you go through A13, you can go through the Tarmoon, which is this tower, and there's, at the end of it, there's five trolls, and they attacked the trolls, uh, mainly because there's a gnome, uh, He's not an oath sworn. What is he? Divine knight. There's a known divine knight in the party. I think he's a divine knight. Uh, and his he hates trolls. And when he saw the five trolls, he attacked them. Now, when they attacked, um, the two fighter types, the oath sworn and the divine knight, were max hit points, max AC, all that stuff. But the wizard was already horribly wounded, uh, and the the rogue had three hit points left when they attacked the trolls. So the the battle went decently, but it. Five natural ones were rolled by the Divine Knight, and then when he hit with his giant slaying sword with for his three to eighteen points of damage, he rolled three ones. It was, it was insane. It was absolutely insane. But that actually played hard against the party because they started to fall. The rogue fell, the mage fell, uh, the Divine Knight. I can't remember if he fell or not, but he he got knocked out of the combat or was driven out or something. But the mage had cast enhance enhance senses or something that gives you a plus one to hit, uh, and in the very last counter round, uh, that plus one was all that the oath sworn needed to get to, to to hit to score. So those bonuses, whether it's one, two, or three, especially if it's three, actually play such a huge role at the table. You know, you'll hear players, and I'm sure you've heard it, Omut, and all of you guys who've experienced. You know, players they get a plus one, whatever, and they're like, ah, it's just a plus one. Man, you have no idea how often that plus one is going to turn the tide in your favor, whether it's opening the lock, uh, avoiding a trap, you know, dodging the, the warded spell, whatever it is. And that plus one is huge. So a plus three, to me, is just it's monstrously huge. Tabletop Center, one of the things I like to do role play a skill is when I want to do an insight, I will shake hands with the individual and place my index finger on the, the radial artery of the person and stare deeply into their eyes to watch for pupil dilation and ask my questions, engaging my insight through pulse change and pupil eye changes. Well, now, that's very interesting. Now, you'd have to have a really good role-playing session going, or you're going to have, you, you might get just nervous players because <laughs> they don't know why you're holding their hand, you know, in such a long, because some people don't shake hands and whatnot. That's, very, that's an interesting way to, to run part of a session. That's very cool. Very, very cool. And Steve, you're not done with Starship Warden until you send me the Star Siege rules and tell me what to do with the extra Warden book. You sent by accident. I've emailed orders in 10, but I'm still waiting. <laughs> I want to resolve it. So what do we owe you? We owe you the Star Siege rules, digital or print. Um, Doctor, I knew. I knew an extra book had gone out. I, I now remember that when we were, you were one of the first ones that went out, and I remember we were packing them and we were testing the weights, um, and we sent... Because we sent, me and Wilson did five of them just to get him started. I always kind of walk into the Kickstarter. And we did those five. Um, and that one I packed. And the next one, or the third one, or whatever it was, had Star Siege and not Starship Warden. And I thought, did that first one say Star Siege or Starship Warden? But we were way too busy. I thought, I'd made a mental not to go back and look at it. And I thought, well, I can just have an extra book. And then, of course, I my tiny brains you got cheated out of a book <laughs> that you wanted all right i'll check orders and make sure it goes out tomorrow we, we got plenty to start seeing so we, we'll get it out to you so you're the one <laughs> you're the fellow we'll get you squared away yeah there will be there was 
six hundred something packages shipped. So there's going to be some that, you know, there's going to be a little bit of there's going to be some hiccups. We'll get them fixed though. I'm looking to add another one of those when the backer kit goes live. Uh, are you talking about? It's already live. Um, what are we talking about? Starship Warden. If you're talking about Starship Warden, it's live and, and golden. You need it. Well, it's, sorry, everything shipped. So <laughs> we'll figure it out, blood well. Uh, oh, but sometimes my players, which are mostly higher levels, find a ring plus one and just rebury it in the wilderness under a tree or something because they don't, they don't want that player joke. <laughs> well, when you get to a high level, it, it, the plus one isn't that, isn't that huge. Or you've got rings that actually, uh, you know, actually have even greater value to them. Uh, so you don't want to, because you can only carry two or three rings in CFC. I can't remember what it is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, the players I've got now, both, both of them, they'll sell a magic item now heartbeat in an absolute heartbeat they'll get something if they don't want it or think it's not bringing enough they will sell it in a, in a nanosecond which is really kind of funny uh, talks from Maine all right yeah we'll get you we'll get you squared away uh it's the stat always nice when you can figure out exactly how and when an error was made yeah i remember that one i don't know why i remember that one that's really funny it's been a lot uh, every been, everyone here, I have enlisted almost everyone in the family to come, you know, because my sons work for me. My youngest son actually works in the shipping department. Uh, and uh, me, Todd, even my wife got into it for a while. There, there's so much. The warden was so involved. Um, oh, the CKG backer kit. So the CKG backer kit, for some strange reason, we, we did it Friday. And it didn't, normally what you do once you pay their fee or whatever, they connect with Kickstarter and download all the backers, right? And then the backers go in and whatever your pledges were and your add-ons and all that goobly goop. And then we let you guys know we have to go live and then we let you guys know and then you go in and fix your pledges, add, subtract, whatever you're going to do. Um, but for some reason, it connected. It didn't download the backer list. So there's we've got the CKG active on backer kit, but there's no backers attached to it. Uh, we emailed backer kit, what is today, Thursday? We emailed them Tuesday, right? Because Monday was a holiday, is that right? Whatever day. We emailed them a couple of days ago, um, and we haven't heard back from them. So I'm not sure what what weird error is happening. I really, I think that I think everything's coming unsprung just a little bit, just just a little bit. It's <laughs> not completely, but but I think things things are starting to come unsprung. It's probably just troll or crap though. Uh, but there you go. At any rate, so any more questions, throw them into the feed. I uh, have to duck out early. All right, great, babe. It was good seeing you again. Uh, we, we're gonna we're gonna probably close her down at about four fifty five or so, uh, so that I can go stomp off my two miles and get that and get that going in this bloody heat. Hey, have Chuck add add the manual by cross referencing the pledges and that. <laughs> we don't want to do any of that. We don't want to do any of that. You know, we've done some of the Kickstarters, and it's not bad. Kickstarter's got a decent uh, a decent way to do it internally. You just can't adjust your pledges on the, the, the backers can't adjust their pledges. So, you know, yeah. We, we like backer kids. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good program, and they're pretty good people over there. And they're usually really responsive. So my guess is they're not certain what, what has happened, and or they're short labor shortages. I don't know. There's, everybody's having trouble. I took the last load load of the wardens up today and was unloading it, and I go up there about the time that the, the manager, the postal manager, is on break, so we can talk, chit chat, or she comes out to have a smoke while I'm unloading, whatever. It is. And um, they lost another employee today, so it's just, so it's just there's no one up there. I actually, it's kind of funny, and I don't mind doing this. I really don't. Uh, she asked if I could go in because she's her older back, you know. I went in and got the, the big bin for all the regular postage and pulled it out the, from behind the clerk area, rolled it out of the dock, loaded it all up, and rolled it back into the, into the clerk area. It's really kind of funny. I know I don't mind doing it, but they, they've got to be shorthanded if they're asking people randomly off the street to come in and help them out. And I, and I don't want to go back to the tavern or back to the dancing at night. night. <laughs> no, I don't want to go back to dancing. There you go. Any idea when the ward will be in the TLG store? Maybe as early as next week. Um, the, big, the biggest problem, and 
I think this is solved. The biggest problem was boxes. We were, I, I got, I'm not certain. We got four inch boxes in. We got the ERB boxes in. I know we got two inch boxes. The biggest problem is the boxes. Uh, but it should, it, it will probably be next week. Uh, now that the Kickstarter is shipped and everybody, all the backers are getting it, so we'll we'll roll it out pretty quick. Yeah, I'm really not certain if I've even solicited it for the store. To be honest with you, it, I thought I did, but I may not have. I need to double check on that. Um, you and I need to schedule a chat soon as we, yes, we do tabletop. I want to I want to bend your ear a little bit. Staffer people don't seem to want to work at all lately. Go to find out. That's crazy. Uh, it's absolutely crazy. Everywhere I go, from McDonald's to the post office, there's help. I've never seen so many help wanted signs. It's kind of crazy. Brave New World uh, wants a, a bigger pre-order Kickstarter Starship Warden or CKG. Which one will be the, the tougher process? The, the Warden by a, by a stretch. We the, the Castle Keeper's Guide. We kept it pretty pretty simple. It's got the book and then three or oh, the index, the book of tables, and something else. Oh, uh, Chuck's book at, at their thing, and then it has other stuff that goes with it, like the tomb or the unclean or whatever. And all of that stuff's in print. Everything's there. We don't have to print much of it. Uh, so actually assembling that will be very, very easy. And the, the biggest problem with the Warden is because the book itself is, what, two and a half inches or two inches thick, and that it doesn't fit standard. If you get even a single add-on, it doesn't fit our standard back boxes. If you get three add-ons, it doesn't fit our standard boxes. Um, and then once we, for the big packages, it started, it, it was just tough to, to come up with a packing method. Uh, and you, and Part of it, well, a lot of the bigger stuff had to go in boxes that don't, you know, we, and you know, we've got normal shipping boxes that fold up, you know, just, they fold up and you put crap in it and you ship it. But the bigger stuff, if you put in a big order, if you put in an order that's over six inches, uh, that gets kicked to a large box that we assemble from the bottom. You've got to fold it, tape it on the bottom, and we do, what, seven, four or five tapes? Five tapes on the bottom, flip it, put the books in, packing peanuts, top, five tapes tapes on, uh, three tapes on the top. It's got a pretty serious procedure. And a good, I don't know, 125 of them, of the wardens were, were that. And it's just labor intensive. It's just, I, I, I've never heard so much cussing about boxes. And I remember Wilson saying something about, I thought the world was going digital. <laughs> no, no it's not. We've got 12,000 boxes to ship. Uh, the PHB is going to, the, the PHB is not going to be too bad either. It's going to be about like the CKG. The hard one actually is going to be the NPC Almanac. Because it's got card decks, uh, um, I, I, it's going to have a giant book. It's going to have the box, uh, you know, the NPC Almanac box. And that's another thing the warden had. It has a box with it. So you had the book, the box, and then 14 other items, or 12 other items that went with it. 11, I don't know, something, whatever. So it was so many items. And to make a box, for most of them, we had to make the the Starship Warden box. Let me go get one. I think I got a damaged one in here. So we had to uh, we had to make the box that it's going to ship in, and then we had to make this box you know, that 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 goes in that box, and then the book itself, of course, is gigantic. So it was just it's it just so much work. And the NPC almanac will have the same thing. It'll, it because it, it's, it's got a box that comes with it. Just absolutely nuts. I'm really anxious. The CKG is supposed to be here next week. I'm so anxious for that book to get in. I'm super stoked on it. Uh, I just I, I wanted. I want it yesterday. Um, and that sounds like a nightmare for shipping, just trying to get it. Yes, it was. And let me tell you, the funniest thing about all that statter, and I think we've talked about this before, because we had it scheduled. I mean, I had it all timed out. The Monsters and Treasure book shows up week one, Warden week two, and I'm, so I bought all the boxes for the Monster book. Um, and then the, the boxes for the, the Warden were supposed to come in the next week. Well, when the Monster book was damaged and we had to return it to the printer, I had all of these boxes, and it, it also had its own boxing problem all over the place. Then the warden, we got to start shipping the warden, and the warden boxes show up. Uh, it, it's it's been about four weeks of utter not chaos. It's been an organized chaos. It's been it's just stuff everywhere, just absolutely everywhere. I was so excited today I could get the vacuum cleaner out and vacuum the print shop because <laughs> there's shit everywhere. Uh, it just. And just to give you an idea of one of the funniest things, and I did this today. I was binding a book 
couldn't get the page count straight. And um, Todd normally does this. Todd's very, <laughs> Todd's very good. He's very patient. And I kept trying to get it straight, so I just, I was like, fuck it. And I, I jammed the thing into the clamp, and I hit start. And I know, I know, as soon as I hit start, it was an idiotic thing to do. But the book was in kind of at an angle. And there's just two huge grinding wheels that grind off the book block so that it chews it up so the glue can be sucked in and, and spread out. And <laughs> it, cut, it cut the corner of the book off. I mean, just cut the corner of the book off. And shit flew everywhere. There was confetti everywhere. It just shot up out of the grinding wheels. I mean, as he chopped this, <laughs> chopped this book into pieces. Clearly, that went into the recycle bin. I, <laughs> we will not even be selling that for, for a damaged book. <laughs> and see, da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, okay. For everyone in the chat, if you aren't, if you aren't TikTok follow Troll or Game, even more Steven and RPG Insights, <laughs> thanks for that tabletop. Yeah, we need to, and also uh, the pledge manager for the pledge pre pledge thing for the Robbie Harry's up and live. I see. So easier times with trolls, <laughs> maybe around the corner. Yes, I think so. I really am looking forward to tomorrow. I can. There's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing on the agenda other than working on the player's handbook. So that, and I can. I, it's only. It's only take a day or two to finish it. Uh, maybe three, depending on the spell section. But so I'm super stoked on tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just super stoked on it. <laughs> it's been an entertaining. It's been a huge learning curve. It's just been a, a huge learning. And part of part of really what needs to be fixed is space. I need about, I just need a warehouse. At this point, we just need more space so that we can spread out and I can get, because we order books, like the boxes, we used to order in bundles of 50, now we order them in bundles of 500, so I just need places to put that stuff. So that whoever's working at the packing table or the binder or the cutter, whoever's doing whatever, because we all kind of we all kind of do everything except Todd mostly binds, um, has actual room to do it, and that would be the amazing thing. The book was sacrificed to offer a moment of clarity to the end of chaos. Yeah, it was definitely sacrificed. Uh, it, it just exploded. I'd never seen the binder do that. I thought it broke it for a minute, but it just it shot stuff everywhere. It was really kind of funny. Uh, it made me stop and get patient again because that, that was the math book in the ward, and the math book's 110 pages, and it just takes forever to print. Uh, it looks like you're going to need to move to Sandwich, Illinois, to buy the off-world design warehouse. Uh, yeah, not Illinois. I love Arkansas. <laughs> so, <laughs> chances of me uprooting or slim to none. Love it down here, though it is pretty hot. You show images of a warehouse when you say you've found stuff in the warehouse, so what do you have it, and it's not in the warehouse. <laughs> yeah, we've got... So we got the warehouse, and then we got the print shop in the mail room, and the print shop... So the print shop is kind of the catch-all for the mailroom because we don't want to go to the warehouse all the time because that's on the other part of town. The print shop is, wait, yeah, print shop's over there. Mailroom's right there. Um, so everything that the mailroom gets backed up goes in the print shop. If there's, so we, we ordered like two-inch boxes. I ordered 2,000 two-inch boxes. Uh, I can keep, I don't know if you can see it. You can sort of, you can see our space management right you can barely see it that white line if you look in the middle there that's actually bundles of two inch boxes and they're under a, a desk where it holds a lot of dr pepper in a refrigerator but um so if, if we have too much that we can't fit into the mail room it goes into the print shop so then the print shop's also got its paper all in the crap that goes the cutters in and the binders in there and all that shit uh, so it, it just gets kind of crap it just gets kind of crap i'm peeved not a single cnc game on schedule at gen con this year if I go, I might have to change that. Uh, yeah, man, we've just dropped the ball completely when it comes to Origins. Um, all of them, really. I don't even know where we are on Gary Con. we got to sit down and figure that out. I'm not sure if we got anything on Gary Con, so we've got to change that. That's one of the things that, that absolutely needs to be fixed, and one of the reasons that I'm, I want to get the CKG and PHB, and I'm really holding off doing any marketing until a player's handbook comes out. I think this new player's handbook is... is a world ahead of the previous seven printings. And Omut, I, I want to thank you for your commentary on that. You really helped kind of refocus my attention on looking at a different way to lay out. We had a conversation months ago, uh, and when I got that into Pete's head, Pete really ran with it. And I think the player's handbook has turned out really, really cool. I'm super stoked on it. So once the PH comes out, and obviously the CKG will be out uh, by that point, it better, <laughs> or something hor went horribly wrong. Um, we can really start pushing Castles and Crusades again. We can step up and really start 
flaming it out. That's what I really want to do. Flaming it out. What the hell does that even mean? Uh, I go to Indianapolis for only a few things. St. Elmer and CNC. Well, sadly, apparently, <laughs> St. Elmer is just still there. Uh, let's see, VGHC2, Stephen. Uh, wait, what is that? Why do I know that? Greyhawk Common. VG, what is the V? I'm an idiot, Jay. I don't know what the hell's going on. But yes, I'm, I think I'm, I'm in your game or I'm running a game or something. I'm, we're doing something at VGHC, absolutely. Check that listing link I sent you on Facebook Messenger. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> will do. I'll check it out. <laughs> hey, Mac has joined us from the road. I'm assuming you're on the road. Virtual, right? Yes. Why did I not know virtual? <laughs> what is wrong with my tiny brain? Yes, I had a lot of fun in your game last year. That was really cool. Very, very cool. Dang, would be awesome if you had Origins. We went to Origins two or three years ago. Jason, I Bay, Jason Bay and I talked about it. I'm not sure. I'm not certain we're going to be there this year. No, we're definitely not going to be there this year. All right, let me answer that question. All right, I think... Yep, there you go. Uh, yeah, that convention thing. This is The nice thing is, really, now that the Warden's done... CKG is done. Players aren't going to be done very soon. Um, I can refocus my attention on doing some of the stuff that really, really needs to be done around here. Uh, I'm fixing to hire someone, I think, to help with social marketing, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, da, 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 da. All right. I think we're going to do, we're going to start winding up now. I'm fixing to, to put my hiking boots on and take a two-mile tramp around the river. And uh, before that, though, uh, I think we're going to do a raid here in a minute. So, as Chuck is putting that together, I want to thank you all for showing up again. Uh, I sure appreciate it, and hopefully next week we'll get this, we'll get GM's tricks of the trade back on track, uh, and get focused on GM's GM GMing uh, and all the googly goop that comes with that, um, and, and we can have some normal, some normal time. All right, Chuck, we'll set us up, uh, and we'll roll it out. Who in the chat is going to Gen Con Pax or Origins uh, on the jet ski? <laughs> That y'all need to go to the TikTok and check out Mac. He did a, a, a great video on a jet ski in a suit. It's really very cool. Uh, and I <laughs> that was like, I never got it. No, Tim put it up on Facebook. That's right. So it got up on Facebook too. It was just awesome. That's how Mac brought in, for those of you who don't know Mac Golden, and Mac Golden is co-creator of Castles and Crusades and founded Troller Games with me back in whatever, 2000, But he brought, he, he began the 4th of July weekend by wearing his suit on a jet ski as he was zipping around the lake. It was, it was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> okay, everyone, we are going to raid a new fellow that enjoys RPGs. Please stay for the raid. Thanks for watching, and as always, all right, so it's coming up soon. Very cool. Uh, thank you all for joining me today, and we'll talk to you next week, Tuesday, same time, uh, and we'll get things rolling. Yes, Troll Con. I'm actually talking to someone about that, Statler, so very soon. All right, everybody, uh, have a great weekend.